Hello, everybody. Welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Anam Khan. I'm the head of content here at Fox on Media. And joined by me today, I have Toby Dixon. Toby is the delivery director of Capital Market at Endeavor. Hello, Toby. How are you? Hello, Anam. I'm very good. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much, Toby, for, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Okay. Um, kick things off, Toby. It will be brilliant if you could give us a brief introduction about yourself and let us know about Endeavor itself. Yeah, sure. So um, Endeavor is an organization. We're a, a, a technology services organization. We have just over 7,000 people um, and we uh, work with a, a nearshore delivery model, which means that the majority of the people who work for us are working in our technology centers based in either uh, Central Europe, serving our, our European clients, or also in uh, Latin America, serving our North American clients. I have a role within the organization, um, which is that of a delivery director. So the delivery um, that we do for our capital markets clients, um, I take responsibility for. Brilliant, brilliant. And today we were we will be di discussing digital necessity in investment management. Um, my first question is, I'm really intrigued by the term digital necessity that you're using. What does it actually mean? Yeah, so um, I, we've been talking about this probably for about the last 12 months. I think a while ago we decided that the term digital transformation was um, a, a little bit too kind of um, start and stoppy um, and, and we have described that instead for a while now as a digital evolution as people um, evolve down this uh, digital path. Now um, I think digital necessity is a, a further iteration along that path and I think there are several elements that come to play here. Um, there are those organizations who are embarking on the journey now um, and I think you can put that into two different terms. You can say there are those who are client facing um, so the question there is, what do we as an organization need to have in place in order to be relevant, uh, in order to survive? Um, what is expected of us as a company by our clients um, in the uh, investment management world, regardless really whether it's institutional or retail, for example, um, there is a foot race that's out there to provide more seamless interactions for those clients. Um, secondly, though, digital necessity for those people who are starting is really also looking at uh, internally. So, um, when you're looking to attract talent in the industry, what's your minimum viable digital footprint that you feel that you need in order to compete for that top talent? Because there are expectations out there, um, particularly considering the future of work. Uh, what do we need uh, internally to increase efficiency, to reduce operational risk, to respond faster, to grow the business without needing to scale the headcount, those kind of things. Um, so that's one group of people who are kind of moving down that journey. There are others who've actually made quite good inroads. Um, you know, they've gone a long way further down the path, but I think there some gaps still remain. Um, and we can call these uh, digital breakages. So that's the expectation or claim that something will execute seamlessly in a, in a digital realm. But in reality, it doesn't, and this can get exposed. So, you know, the question for those organizations is, do you know where these are? Um, secondly, what else needs to be done? So speeding up some parts of the organization is great, but you can only move as fast as your slowest moving part in these terms. Brilliant. And how is this relevant to the investment management industry? So um, we think that there are lots of reasons why digital necessity is relevant. And um, I think we can probably look at the major industry drivers and themes that we see and, uh, and just kind of look at how it, uh, digital necessity um, is relevant to them. So, for example, one of the largest ones in recent times has been pressure on fees. Um, so how do you ensure that your operations are running effectively? Um, you know, how can you generate your lowest total cost of ownership uh, in running those operations? Uh, technology and digitization plays a significant part in that. Um, second one, which I think has been traditionally seen as a, a retail phenomenon, is uh, what's known as generational shift. So this is the idea that uh, investors becoming more demanding in their expectations around digital interaction. So much more on the, on the wealth side or on the, on the retail side. Um, typically, that has been seen and expressed in, in terms of, uh, you know, mobile apps or the, the, the portals that people can interact with. But actually, we think this is just as uh, applicable within the institutional space. So, you know, those younger generations that are coming through. Um, who are expecting that privately are also expecting that professionally. 
So, you know, when they're managing their institutional portfolios, um, they are also expecting smoother interactions. Um, coming back to the operational efficiency point, there is definitely something around self-service and actually moving the work that you as an organization do um, to your clients in order to, to have them do something that is, is customized and suitable for them. So that's the second point. I think um, others, regulation um, is creating a need for more information a lot faster. Um, I think the industry has a, a lot in um, the, the way of market consolidation at the moment. Um, and so there is a need to understand and be able to uh, communicate between uh, complex uh, systems and platforms. Um, we have the fintech disruptors, which are coming through, or the invest tech disruptors coming through. Um, an awful lot of um, large organizations have over the past few years um, really started to uh, adopt and embrace that uh, disruptor element and so are um, starting to either do their own thing or actually uh, um, acquire organizations and obviously the question there is how to capitalize on you know those those investments quickly how to get a good ROI on on the investment that's made there um, finally I think um, emerging market themes so for example uh, ESG is a, is a hot topic at the moment you know they are definitely changing the breadth and the depth of investment decision making uh, and that has significant um, implications and impacts around digital and, uh, and how you go around with the digital. So I think for all those reasons, digital necessity is actually really quite relevant to this industry. Brilliant. And now that we're living in a very unpredictable environment, especially because of COVID-19, what is the impact COVID-19 pandemic has had um, in this regards in the industry? So, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we've been thinking about this prior to COVID, but I, I think what it's done is it's amplified the push towards digital necessity that I've previously mentioned. Um, for most people in financial services, I think this has been, the, the way I describe it, is a, 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 you know, a business continuity planning or a disaster recovery incident taking place in slow motion. Um, you know, it did take um, days and weeks for COVID to truly impact, um, but uh, impacted it definitely has. Um, I think there are a couple of interesting dynamics emerging when, when you're looking at what's happened within the industry. Uh, you know, coming back to digital necessity, coming back to digital breakage, during the first wave of the pandemic, I think, you know, the question organisations have hopefully asked themselves is what broke? So, you know, what didn't work? Where were those um, holes? Uh, and then secondly, as the, as the second wave is, you know, unfortunately upon us, the question is then, you know, have you been able to fix what broke during wave one? So are you positioned to, to cope better with that? Um, I think the, uh, the pandemic has also changed our perception of, of digital. So um, to give you an example, I, I talked previously about generational shift and about the fact that this has been mainly um, focused around the UX and, and kind of the interactions with mobile apps and, and portals and so on. Um, that was all predominantly aimed at digital natives. So, you know, the, the whole drive towards uh, simplified front ends, um, pushing complexity behind the UI, which, um, you know, creates complexity in other parts of the system landscape, but, but that's another thing. Um, actually, one of the things that Corona did was it encouraged the demographic shift to go upwards. So all of a sudden you have people who would traditionally deal with bricks and mortar actually looking to get online, looking to interact with uh, their investment portfolios online. Um, I think that's introduced a, a different level of clarity and a different relationship with technology that's, that's been required. Um, not everybody intuitively knows that three dots on a screen means options, for example. So, you know, lots of people will, um, as the demographic shift has changed, will need a little bit more guidance around how to use their, their digital platforms. Um, finally, I think um, actually for the organizations themselves, for the, for the investment management firms, I think it exposed them to the fact they weren't as digital as they thought. Coming back to my previous um, comment, I think, uh, you know, physical signatures on documents and the need to go and see somebody is still um, uh, something that needs to be solved across the industry. Uh, I've certainly had, you know, stories over the course of the past few months, for example, 
uh, cross-border trades where physical certificates have been sitting in bank vaults, unable to, to move anywhere. Um, you know, your ability to book a face-to-face -face appointment with your uh, financial advisor or investment manager, um, you know, was still there, but actually you weren't at the same time able to arrange to talk to them over a video conference because of the way that the, the systems and platforms were set up. Um, more on the um, back office side, you know, the processes there were heavily reliant on, on manual work and, uh, you know, had lots of examples of um, as people move towards shift patterns, for example, um, other people needing to be dragged in, um, working in other parts of the building in order to actually help cope with those, those manual processes. Um, finally, I think, uh, you know, there's a, a, um, it's exposed a, a lack of ability to cope with working away from physical locations. Um, an awful lot of the organizations that, that we talk to, you know, have the, the standard traditional challenges of needing their, their trading um, platforms to have multiple screens for the traders to look at. You know, in the back office side, you've got the need for um, decent printers and scanners in order to be able to, to work and so on. So I think, you know, COVID has actually had quite an impact from that perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what are the conversations Endeavour is having with the industry about digital necessity? So, yeah, um, we were having conversations uh, and delivering projects, I think, prior to the pandemic. Um, you know, most of them about some of the, the, the market forces that we've talked about. So particularly at that point in time, I think um, an awful lot around M&A integration, which is obviously something that's happening in the market. Um, platform landscape consolidation or platform refresh um, is definitely a topic. Joining ecosystems uh, to enable visibility across the merged organization is a topic. Process efficiency was always there and continues to be. And I think uh, customizable user experiences, um, not just for clients, but also internally has been something we've been talking to clients about for quite a long time. Um, quite a lot of organizations picked up on the back of the pandemic as these digital breakages and these new digital necessities emerge. So these conversations are, are I'd say, broader and more urgent now. Uh, and they're focused more around the, the um, necessary data initiatives that actually um, emerge. So data is a big theme here. Um, digitizing onboarding processes, um, moving your infrastructure to be more cloud-based from an architectural perspective. Uh, and as we talked about previously, looking at the future of work and, and challenging traditional models. So I think, um, you know, those conversations have definitely moved on as digital necessity has fallen under the spotlight. Um, I think the other thing to say is just, this isn't an IT department thing. This is something that the entire business needs to be bought into achieving, and it definitely requires a mindset shift. Um, I think uh, what's interesting is how do you measure success around these things? So we're also talking with organizations about how to demonstrate return on investment, um, what the applicable KPIs are that you can, uh, you can use. Um, and the other piece, I think, uh, is just, you know, an awful lot of this is very valuable when it comes to experience. So having an outside perspective, um, you know, having done this a number of times, I think is, is valuable as you are looking to um, change kind of your, your digital footprint and plug your, your gaps that you deem necessary. I, th I think that that's definitely also something that's, that's coming through in the conversations we're having. And what sort of technology solutions are people looking at in order to achieve this? So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I think, uh, I think there's an awful lot out there. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, including at board level, um, get drawn to the shiny things, uh, get drawn to the buzzwords. Um, and there is a place for most of them, definitely. I think, um, you know, the, the, the buzzwords that don't have any traction tend to kind of die away pretty quickly. Um, so we are actively working with clients in better understanding how to, um, how to harness the potential of, for example, um, robotic process automation, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, distributed ledger technology, robo-advice, chatbots, you name it, those, those things we're, we're, we have a view on and, and um, have experience in, in how to get the best out of them. I think, though, the reality is that any of these need to be built on a solid foundation, um, which enables change fast. So um, those are some of the, uh, the kind of the, the foundational things include data, as I mentioned before, which is a key. 
um, reduced legacy architecture um, and, and looking to move that in favor of modern, more flexible architectures. Um, I think having the right blend of um, package and customized software um, in order to ensure that you have a differentiated investment platform, I think is, is important. Um, we, uh, we see um, technology solutions around the uh, having sound infrastructure strategies, for example. So um, ensuring that you're offering flexibility, um, availability, scalability through your infrastructure is, is really important because that has a knock on impact, impact onto how you um, deliver your technology. Uh, and, and finally, on that point, your delivery model, I think, um, you know, is incredibly important how to move from idea to productive uh, software that can hit the market as, as fast as possible, I think is, is something that sometimes gets overlooked. Um, some of these things, some of these foundations, they, they may sound dull in comparison with the, the shiny hype, um, but actually the returns on getting these things right do pay dividends in the long run. Um, and so an example, you know, in, in the recent pandemic is those people who had the foresight to invest into things such as desktop infrastructure and platforms as service solutions prior to COVID, uh, you know, they've had a, quite a few months and, and a nicer summer as a result, I suspect. Um, it doesn't mean any of the sexy stuff, you know, needs to stop. I think it can all be done in parallel, but it is important that the right foundations are in place to build upon. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Tia, Endeavor will be participating at TSAM Investment Operations. What can our audience expect from the panel? Yeah, so uh, we're really looking forward to it, actually. We're, we're really excited. We've got some good guests who are going to be joining and, uh, you know, with some deep insights into what's happening in their world in the industry. Um, I think uh, we're going to look at some of the themes that I've talked about here in some more depth, um, specifically in relation to investment operations and kind of go a bit deeper there. Um, and I think essentially we're aiming to give useful insight to, to those people in operations and technology who want to make a difference in their organization. Uh, I think it's going to be an awful lot of fun. All right. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Toby, for joining us today. Hopefully our audience have had a good time. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, Anand. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.